Hi there, it's Rose from the Painted Toad, and today we are going to be painting this lucky little leprechaun. So join me and let's have some fun. I have my little sketch, and like I said, if you would like to do this at home, either yourself, or this is even a fun one to do with the kids, um, just put lucky in the comments and I will send you the link in order to get the, um, the template here, as well as our color list and all that. With a template, it's super easy. Um, if you get, if you go to the craft store, they have um, transfer paper. It's uh, in the arts and crafts aisle, and it's you. You put it down. You put your image. You trace over it, just like a transfer paper for a check. If you ever have those in your checkbook, and you can trace this image right onto your canvas. So I actually, um, I didn't have any transfer um, paper, but I just sketched it on there because it's my design. So, <laughs> alright, I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit so that you can see it better. And then I know this is in pencil, but as we um, add in, as I add in some color, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I'm like adjusting here. Um, and let me just make sure we're in focus. And I am videotaping this just in case my original or my Facebook video is not turning out right. So I'm just going to make sure we're all set here. And if you can let me know how the video is looking on your end, I would greatly appreciate that. Because our internet out here where we live is rather slow. So we don't always know if it's just our internet when I'm watching something back or if it's, um, if it's because it didn't work out well in terms of the video. Okay, if you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are going to be painting this little leprechaun. So, I usually like to start out um, with backgrounds. We're going to kind of do some base colors. I want to do, I'm, I was hesitating on the background. I wasn't exactly sure what I want to do, but I'm going to do um, a light blue. Now, you can get these paints, you know, you can go to the craft store and get paints that are um, light blue already, so you can get them in the bottle. Um, I do tend to mix a lot of my paints, so uh, and I'm also using artist paints. You could also use craft acrylics on this. Craft acrylics are a little bit thinner than the artist paints. And um, I've got some, this is thalocyanine blue, and I have some white, and I am going to mix these together. So whenever you mix paint, it is always, 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 let me turn that so you can actually see better. Okay, it's always very important that you take your dark and put it into your light. Now you would think it wouldn't matter. Um, you would think that it would be fine to go the other way. What? Why does it make a It just makes a difference. So anytime you're mixing paints, always take the darker color, add a little bit to your lighter color. All right, so I have a very pretty, this is actually a really pretty blue. I like this blue. So I've got a pretty blue there. And um, I'm also gonna just get a touch more white here because whenever I do backgrounds and skies and things like that, you know, it's not always just one big solid color. There's a, usually some clouds up there, there's atmosphere. So I'm going to add a little bit more white and I'm gonna pull out one of my flat brushes here now sometimes with backgrounds, let's see how big mine is. Mine is a pretty, there's not much background in here. Sometimes with backgrounds, um, with a painting, we'll do the whole background first. But to save time today, um, I decided I'm just going to kind of paint around my design. So sometimes that can be a little bit tricky. A lot of times I'll just do the whole background and then do the design on top of that. But then we're going to have to mask things in and um, I didn't want to take up your whole day. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm getting some of the blue and some of the white right here on my flat brush, and I'm just going to kind of fill in around. Now, if you go over your lines or something like that, that's that's totally fine, totally. Um, you know, it 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 doesn't matter because we're going to be painting all of this anyway. So don't worry about going over the lines or you didn't get it quite right. It's, it's all right. So I'm just painting in this is thalocyanine blue with a little bit of white. And um, I'm kind of keeping my direction horizontal here for my background. 
I might add a little bit of touch more white on there just to brighten it up a little bit. There we go. Now I may change this later. I haven't quite decided, but um, I thought I'd keep it fun, bright colors. If you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are painting a lucky little leprechaun. And you can learn to paint this wonderful, fun little painting. Um, obviously, if you're not doing it along with me today, you can try it. I'm going to be uploading it to my YouTube page later, or you can come back to Facebook and watch it on um, the Painted Toad business page, because that'll be posted. And if you would like the color list and the template, the tracing template for this, all you have to do is put Lucky into the comments. And if you're cruising on by, stop in, say hello. Let me know that you are here. And uh, tell me what you think. What do you think about our background here? Do we like the blue? Looks like our sky the last couple days. It's been so pretty outside. It feels like spring. It makes me want to start planting a garden. It's too early though. But that's why we paint instead. When you can't plant the garden yet, then you can paint the garden. Maybe that's what I should do. Maybe we should do a garden painting. That might actually be a fun one to do. All right. So I'm just getting, I'm just kind of, my edges here, I always like to make sure that my edges are painted. Um, I am going to bring this background down here a little bit. And uh, I'm going to come in and around this leprechaun and the shamrock. Um, but that's not going to stay that way forever. We'll add some other, um, we're going to add some other things going on there. So I wanted to make this leprechaun look kind of miniature. So that's why we have like these giant shamrocks and the big mushroom to make him look tiny. Because I don't know, I think the little wee folk, the little wee folk are tiny. Wee little leprechaun. We'll see if I can get my uh, accent. I don't know, I'll mess around with it as we're painting today. I used to do that a lot when I was a school teacher. Whenever the kids, my students were, especially in the afternoon when they were getting kind of sleepy and wanting the day to end, then I'd pull out some interesting uh, voices and then they'd perk right up. <laughs> I don't know, it's just something fun that I've always done. I like doing different voices. Okay. So we got that. Ooh, it's looking pretty. I like it. It's a little bit darker on this side, but hey, that's okay. I could go back and add. I'll add a little bit of white. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's not all the same color, so it's good to have light and dark areas. Now this is really bright around the leprechaun, so I'm going to add more blue on my brush there. I just kind of wiped off the white. I had a lot of white on the brush, so I really want to kind of bring this around my leprechaun. And he's, he's kind of standing there with his hands behind his back. There we go. All right. And if you're joining me today, say hi. I'd love to acknowledge you. This is Rose from the Painted Toad, painting a lucky leprechaun. And we're just working on the background right now. And if you want to do this painting, just put lucky in the comments. And after the broadcast today, I will put a link in there for the supply list and the template and a link to um, I'll upload this on YouTube so that you can access the YouTube video and watch it there or you can come back and watch this again on Facebook sometimes it's if it's if you're doing this with um, your kids or something like that you know it's nice to be able to just head over to YouTube and and watch it on there oh hello I've got a kitty cat in my window all right, just put in a little bit more white here. Notice I'm not too worried about these edges. I will paint over those edges later. If you get close, that's good. That's all we can ask for. 
and uh, we're going to be adding grass and some other things. So now that I've got that done, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let's go on and I usually like to do like, you know, you have to think about what is, what, what's what on here and what isn't, so I don't want it to blend too much. Um, if you're doing this at home, it might be a good idea to um, give it a little blow dry. I use my hair dryer. I actually don't really use it on my hair anymore. I use it for my paintings. So um, you can come in and blow it dry and that way you don't have colors mixing. A lot of times people have trouble with painting because they're trying to do wet paint on top of wet paint and then it just becomes this big disaster. I'm going to come in and do my shamrocks because blue and green um, if they do mix, because this is wet, if they do mix a little bit, that'll be fine. It's not going to create any crazy color combinations. Okay, so I have this. Um, it's cadmium green, or sometimes you can find medium green, or sometimes if you're looking at the craft paints, they'll give you different colors. But this is a real nice, pretty green. And I think I could go one of two ways. I could add a little bit of yellow in this, and I could make kind of brighter, more springy colored looking shamrocks, or I could add a little blue, um, or even some of this dark green here um, to get maybe a little bit darker look. I think I'm going to try and see. I'm going to try the light and dark green. We'll see how it turns out. Here's the thing. If I don't like the way it turns out, um, when you're doing acrylic, you just let it dry, go back, and you can paint over again. So I did a video on that recently. I did a little bunny. Um, that was the one where the the video just wasn't going it was it's kind of pixely but you can hear me very clearly which is nice but you can't really see the picture that great you can see the texture really good but I repainted the background of a little spring bunny that I painted it was a brown background and then I repainted it to a nice shade of um, blue blue and white and I like it better it really makes the bunny stand out so I'm using, I put some dark and some light green on here. The dark is taking over a little bit. So I'm going to kind of, I added just a little bit more of the light green. And I'm just going to paint this in here. Kind of fill in these colors. So if you're just joining me, it's Rose from the Painted Toad. We're painting a little Lucky Leprechaun. And I'm currently working on my shamrock here. I used some cadmium green and dark green. And uh, with the colors, it really kind of depends on what, um, what paints you're using. You know, the colors that you see in the um, painting section of a craft store or art store are going to be different than the colors in the craft section. Craft section has little bottles and they usually give fancy little names, but um, there's a little bit more consistency in the names um, in, in the regular paint. Like you'll have titanium white or Mars black, so those are some common names. Cadmium green is a common name. Um, so what I like to say, rule of thumb for colors, is, you know, if if this color list calls for green or something like that, well, choose a green that you like, you know? It doesn't actually have to be the exact color. If you see a, a shade of green that you really like, well, then that's the green you can use. You don't have to, you know, worry too much about having the perfect, exact paint colors. So I'm going to do this little shamrock over here, and I'm really, um, if you notice here as I'm painting, I kind of am trying to follow my brush stroke. So since this little shamrock is round, I'm kind of painting around the edges. And look how I, the flat brush, I love it because look at, I can get this nice clean line there. And then I can come back here and kind of, you know, if you go sideways like this, you can kind of you can do different uh, textures and things. This is kind of fun to do this. 
and get a little texture in there. I don't know if you can see that on the video or not. Now, this little stem here, I could do one of two things. I could get my round brush out, but I am partial to the flat brush. So I'm gonna take my flat brush and I'm just gonna use the edge of it. And I'm gonna do this and let me make sure you can see that. Can you see that okay? All right, I'm gonna do it on an angle here. Normally I would hold my hand right up, but when I do that, you can't see anything. So I'm gonna hold it on a, on a side, but for you, it's, it would probably be much easier to hold it up above what you're painting. And then I'm just gonna move my arm down like that. And there we have the little edge here, or the, the edge. Oh my gosh, the stem. Now my little leprechaun is also gonna be wearing green. And I kind of feel like, you know, Leprechauns are secretive, they hide places. So we want this little guy to be able to blend in with his surroundings almost like camouflage. So he should be wearing some green that matches the shamrocks. We don't want it to be too different from our shamrocks. So I'm just gonna go in and paint in his hat and all of that. Oop, I'm gonna dry my brush a bit more. You can see how thin that paint looks on there. That's because my brush was still a little bit damp. So this is not watercolor, this is acrylic. Watercolor, you can use lots of, oh, what do we have going on here? Um, lots of water, of course. Watercolor, you need water. Uh, acrylic, you can add water to acrylic to thin it out, or um, for the most part, you want it to be thicker. Now this green, this is a cadmium green, um, it seems to be a little bit thin. So what I might do, if that happens, I'm just gonna do this as my first coat and I might have to come back and paint this again um, with a second coat so that I can get it a little bit darker. There we go. I could take, I'm gonna take a little of the dark green and kinda bring some of that in there. There we go. I'll just kind of bring that in. I'll do some more, I'll add some more paint to this too. It a, a lot of times your paint, it can be kind of thin. It just depends on the brand. And um, sometimes too, they have different thicknesses. There are things you can add to paint to also make it thicker. So his little vest, I am gonna do, hmm. You know, I'm gonna just do a light layer of green on here, but I think I'm gonna do something a little brighter. So this will be my base coat. I'm not gonna worry too much about the beard here, so just bring it up to the beard. We'll get to that later. Do the um, little arms, like he's wearing a little waistcoat. There we go. Just kind of fill all this in. We'll come back and add the details. And um, if you're wondering, how am I gonna be able to see the design? I can, sh I can actually see the pencil through there so it is possible to see that. There we go. We'll give him a little green suit. Oh, and I almost forgot the rim here. So I'm gonna, this is, um, I could get a smaller flat brush to do the rim, or I'm just gonna come in here and use the edge of this brush here. Just kind of fill it in. There we go. I'm not gonna do the shamrock yet because I'm gonna actually add a different color to his band on here. Maybe something that matches waistcoat. I'll have to see. Oops, sticky note. Get that out of the way. Okay. So if you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Paint Toe. We're painting a Lucky Leprechaun today. And I just about finished painting the leprechaun. Bring his pants down here. Oop, I forgot. There's a little bit of blue there between his legs. He's got little stockings. I'm actually going to do stripes on the stockings later, but right now we'll just leave it as is. Take a touch of blue. Just kind of bring it up in there. I missed that little part. There we go. We may end up going over that anyways. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch up some color here. I'm gonna let this green dry a little bit and I'm gonna come in down here and work on um, the stem of my mushroom. And so for the mushroom stem, I am thinking, you know what, I didn't grab my brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown 
So I've got some raw umber. This is kind of a dark brown. There's different shades of um, brown in the art section. You'll see umber and you'll or yeah umber and sienna. So sienna is more of a reddish brown. The umber is more of a dark chocolatey brown. And it looks like I'm almost out of this too. I only need a touch of the raw umber. And I'm going to see, my white has a little bit of blue in it, so I don't really want blue in my mushroom. So I'm going to add just a touch of white, just a drop. So I got some brown and white. And whoop, can we see that? Yeah, okay, right there. Brown, white. Um, using my flat brush. And I'm going to just dip it first in the white. And then I'm just going to kind of gently just dab it like a teeny tiny bit. I don't want the brown to take over like crazy. And then I'm going to take the brush and I'm just going to kind of bring it down the length of the mushroom here. And I should get, see how I'm getting some brown streaks there? So I, I want it to look kind of like a mushroom stem. Kind of woody almost, but mushroomy. Yeah. So we're going for mushroom. And if you're joining me, pop in, say hi. Let me know you're here. Let me know how your day is going. I was talking earlier. We had excitement today at our house with the hatching of a baby chick. So we've got little Lucky the chick. She or he hatched this morning. And we're waiting for it. It's still pretty needs to fluff up. Waiting to see what kind of colors. It looks like it's got some dark feathers and some little light blonde feathers. So I think it might end up being a pretty colorful bird. I'm just taking some of this brown here and I'm creating some lines because I want it to look like a mushroom stem. So I am, if you notice, I'm taking my brush strokes and I'm stroking in the way that the mushroom would grow. So our lines would be long like this. I'm not going to go um, horizontally because that's not how mushrooms are. I mean their lines are long, vertical. So that's that's why I'm doing it that way. And then up in here, let's kind of just add, I'm just going to take some white up in here with the brown still on there. I'm just going to kind of bring this up in here and we're going to go back later and we will add well, I might be able to do some texture now. Let me just fill this in first. Just kind of a beigey color on my brush. It's the white and the um, raw umber. There we go. And then I can take, while my brush is still um, wet with paint, I'm going to take some of that raw umber and I'm going to just create some lines kind of going up like this so I can kind of create a little bit of texture coming in here you know those little striations you get in the mushroom when you look under the mushroom cap it's got all those little striations so I'm just gonna I'm just taking the edge of my flat brush here and I'm just kind of going around notice I'm doing a radial pattern here because I want it to look like it's um, growing up and into the inside of the mushroom. There. We got some lovely striations. And see how I'm just kind of going over this edge? You know, we can, we're, we'll go back and clean that edge up later. But for right now, I've got this lovely little mushroom. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And it looks like my little leprechaun, the green is dry, so I'm gonna go back over there. And we are going to, let's do a little bit of skin tone. Now skin tone, depending on your subject matter, our little leprechaun is from Ireland. So he's going to have a very fair skin tone. Um, kind of like mine, very fair. I burn easily, I have to wear sunscreen. So our little guy too, he's very fair skinned, fair skinned, red hair. He's gonna have a little red beard, that's the plan. So in order to create um, kind of a, 
a light pale skin tone. I'm going to use a little bit of white. Um, I can take a little bit of, I've got some magenta here. So I'm going to just, I don't really need a ton of this. Um, let me do this. I'm going to set this aside because I want to show you how to, to mix the skin tone. Now, if this is too complicated for you, you can always just go, go to the craft section and find a color that um, looks like the skin tone you want. So, but like I said, I'm doing color mixing today. So I'll teach you some of the tricks of the trade here. Got a little bit of magenta. So we got that. And then I'm also going to use just a touch of orange. Now I don't need a lot of this co these colors because um, his face is very small. Oops, it would help if I open the orange. The orange is not open. You know what, I have another orange. I'm just going to use that one. I'm being too lazy. It's easy to open this, but I have one that's right here and it's ready. This is kind of a deep coral orange and this will work just fine. It's actually got a little bit of, uh, there we go. It's kind of a coral color, kind of a peachy looking orange. And that was a craft paint. So see, you can get different colors, a lot of different color choices if you do craft paint. Okay, so do you remember what I mentioned before? If we're paint mixing, we always wanna make sure, get some more white over there, that we take our darker colors and mix them into the lighter colors, okay? So we've got the white here, and I'm just gonna let my brush soak while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna take my darker colors, like my coral or my orange, and mix it in there. Now I might like this color as it is, if you're using orange, though, you might want to shade more pink. This is actually a pretty, this is a pretty shade right here. I don't even know if I need to add the pink, but if you are using straight up orange, you might want a little pink just to get it to be a little peachy if you're doing that fair skinned Irish red haired look. So our little Irish leprechaun. So I'm going to save that pink though because I'll probably use that and give his cheeks a little bit of pink, maybe a little pink on his nose. But I really didn't need that much at all because his face is really small. He kind of has a big nose though. He's I gave him a gnome, a gnome-like nose. You know how gnomes, gnomes are everywhere right now. Everybody's into gnomes. So he's kind of a gnomey little leprechaun um, except that he has a top hat as opposed to a tall pointy hat like a gnome would. So I'm going to come in here and let's paint this and I probably will need a couple coats of this. We'll see how it covers. So I have my little fair skinned leprechaun. He's a wee Irish leprechaun. I'm going to kind of paint over the beard because we can go back over that later. I painted over the nose. I can still see my lines. I don't know if you can see them. but. If you're doing a painting, you should be able to see your own lines if you sketched it on there with that, um, pencil or if you did the transfer. Sometimes people like to go over it like with a Sharpie marker just so they can really see better, but then you have to worry about covering up the Sharpie, so I don't always do that. All right, so there's his little pale face. and. Let's see, what color band do you think he should have? I mean, should we go all out with some Ireland here and maybe give him an orange band? Should we go, ooh, I could do a gold band. That might be kind of cool. Like he's got a little gold band. I do have some gold paint, if I can find it. My gold paint always tends to go to the bottom of my paint bin. And I didn't think, see, I didn't think to pull it out because I wasn't planning on doing gold, but sometimes as I'm going along, I have these, you know, ideas and I change up my plan, my original plan. So I think if I can find my gold, aha, gold metallic. You can't go wrong with metallic. So this is Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are painting a lucky little leprechaun. If you're just stopping by, say hi. Let me know you're here. Seeing a couple viewers pop in. Must be shy. <laughs> Let me see. All right, so I've got some gold. I'm gonna add that. 
This gold I have is so hard to get out of the bottle. There we go. Just a touch. I think that'll be fun. He'll have a little gold band. And I'm just going to go right over this. Oh yeah, I like the gold. And then he can have little gold buttons, which will be even more fun. So a little gold band on his top hat. Because he's got, he's got a wee pot of gold. Stands to rainbow. And so I think he would he would wear a little bit of gold here. I'm just using because this is such a skinny little line, I'm just using the edge of my brush there. So hopefully can you see that okay? Hopefully you can see that. Let me see. Am I still streaming here? Oh, let me see. Let's see here. Okay, good. I'm checking my um, video right here, making sure we're nice and in focus. All right, hopefully the stream is coming through okay. If you're popping by, let me know how you can see on your end. How is it uploading? Is it pixely? Can you hear me? Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just adding some gold there. <gasps> he needs gold shoes. I wasn't sure what color shoes, but he's going to have gold shoes. So little gold shoes. Little lucky gold shoes. There we go. I think that's perfect. And then I didn't do his little tights yet, his little stockings. So I think I'll do the stockings in a dark green, just to stand out. And I, I'll probably add some stripes on them too. But for right now, there's just little details here. He's kind of a tiny little guy. So I'm going to use some of my dark green on there. And we'll just bring it right up to the shoe. There we go. I'm not even really painting there. I'm just kind of touching it to the canvas just to bring the paint down to get those skinny little legs. So if you are doing this one, you might want to get, you know, a smaller, um, some smaller brushes. If you're the five by seven, it's small. So you do have, have that uh, to deal with here. All right. So while this is kind of drying now, now I'm going to go up to my mushroom because this is all dry over here. So I'm ready to do my mushroom. And the mushroom, I want to do a bold red orange because I want some contrast. So here's the thing. When you're working with um, colors, you have complementary colors. Remember hearing that ever before? So complementary colors are across each other from the color wheel, and they're like the exact opposites. So the exact opposite of green is red. So um, I'm going to do some red on this mushroom so that I have some real contrast or difference between that and all my green. I got a lot of green going on here. And I am going to open my orange now because I wanted kind of a bright red orange. So I just have, it's just cadmium orange and the red I'm using is permanent red. But like I said, if you're choosing colors, just pick colors that you like. You know, it doesn't have to be the exact colors that I have here. And if you want the color list in the template, put Lucky in the comments. And after the broadcast, I will go through and I will send you a link so that you can paint this on your own. I'll give you access to the video. Um, and then you'll also get the color list and the tracer, our little leprechaun tracer right here. Super duper simple little design. Okay, so I'm mixing up some colors for my mushroom. I've got some orange, I've got some red. I'm going to mix those together. And where's my mixing knife here? Okay, we're back to that mixing rule again. Here I have red and here I have orange. So red is darker than orange, so I'm going to take the red and put it into the orange. Now, I could mix it like this. Actually, you know what I might do? All right, I just changed my mind. Let's do this instead and see how this turns out. I'm actually going to double dip my brush again in the orange and the red at the same time. And when you do that, instead of mixing it on the palette, we're going to let it mix right here on our, on our painting. So, you get 
I think sometimes when you do it that way, it, I don't know, it gives it a bit more of a natural look. So I'm going to dip it in my orange first. And then I'm going to dip it just a touch of my red because red is so much darker. So we'll see. Now if I want it to look, oh that's pretty orange. I want it to look more red, so I'm going to add some more red in there. And I'm just going to slow it down along the edge here. Let me just get the top edge of this canvas there. I always like to remember to do that. Sometimes I'll forget. So if I do it first thing, then uh, it works out a little better. Okay, now I'm bringing my brush around here, and this is kind of a wider round edge here. So I'm just going to scoop that around there. I can go over the blue a little bit, that's fine. And I'm going to fill this down here. Now, what I like to do, if I want a nice clean edge along this um, this mushroom cap here, I'm going to use my flat brush to an advantage. So I've got a lot of paint on here. I always want to make sure you have enough paint to get where you're going. I'm just going to move my arm and I'm just going to use to my advantage the flat edge of that brush just to kind of clean that edge right up so it's a nice smooth edge. Then I can kind of come down and blend this in. It's a little easier to do it that way so you can get that clean edge using your flat brush. All right, how's it? See how that? See how that contrast comes in? Um, because the red is so different from the orange, or from the orange. No, it's very similar to the orange. It's different from the green. So our complementary colors of red and green get that contrast. That's why over the Christmas season, holiday season, you see lots of red and green. They look good together because they're complementary colors. Complementary colors contrast each other. So who knows their other complementary colors? I used to quiz my students on this. We actually used to play something called the color game. And we would have they would have to um, stand or move under something that was a certain color. So if, um, let's say the color was orange, I would say stand or find something that's the complementary color of orange. And so they would all rent a different parts of the room and find something that was blue. So blue and orange are complementary colors, in case you didn't know that. And that leaves our last two. So we got red and glue, green, blue and orange. That means yellow and purple are complementary colors. All right. I added a little bit more red on this side. And I'm going to have a little fun with this mushroom to kind of give it mm, some variation. I've got the red and then it kind of mixes into this red orange going into more of an orange. And then, see this is all happening on the fly. I am making this up as I go. So once I'm done with it then I'll, you'll have all the directions on how to make it, you know, the way you want it. You can modify it as you please. How are we doing on time? Okay, good. This probably, these little paintings take me about an hour, sometimes faster if I already have a color plan, but when I'm thinking as I'm going, I, I tend to go slower. I'm gonna take a little yellow. What is this? Primary yellow, so a little bit of yellow. And I'm gonna just add a touch on here. Don't need very much. This paint is still wet. And I'm just gonna take some yellow on my brush and I'm just gonna bring in a little yellow over here and see if I can. This yellow is a little thin. I don't know if this is gonna make much of a difference. If not, I will have to um, wait till it dries and then I can lighten it up. We'll see though. I might be able to get a little bit of difference here with the yellow. We'll try. That's why I always say when you're mixing the colors, it's easier to go from uh, mixing the dark into the light. See, I'm trying to put the light onto the darker orange, and so the yellow's getting a little lost here, but I think it is brightening up our mushroom just a tad. There we go. Oh, I think I like that. Okay, so I might add a little bit more yellow later just to give a little variation. Maybe I add a little yellow up here. We'll see. We're gonna let this dry just a little bit. 
Here, I'm just adding a little bit over here just to brighten that up. It's still a little bit wet. Okay, let's come back to, let's see, my little leprechaun, my shamrocks could use some more coloring here. Oh, you know what I should do though? While my, while my brush is all red and orange, let's go in and do his beard. So I'm gonna do more orange than red. And we're just going to give them kind of a bright little beard here. And I'm using the edge of my, I tend to use my flat brush a lot. It's my favorite. I could switch it up and do something different, but you know, when, when it works with what you want to do, and I'm just using the edge of it. See, I'm making it scruffy. I'm giving a, I'm doing red and orange right on my brush here. And I'm just doing kind of an uneven, scruffy little beard. Here we go. Oh my gosh, so cute. Oop, that got super red. Don't worry, I'll come back and fix it later. There we go. There, see? Just pick it up a little bit with the brush, brighten it up. Oh my gosh, this is turning out so cute. I love the beard. So it's red and orange on my brush, and I'm just using the edge like this. Just kind of making little dashed lines. He's got scruffy little beard. Look how cute he is. Super cute. Okay, I'm gonna work a little bit on my shamrocks while his face is drying. <clears throat> Pardon me. I had my water over here, but sometimes if I have my water, I accidentally like dip my paintbrush in it. So it's probably better that it's not here at the moment because that has happened more than once. So I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm using the cadmium green, which is my lighter green on here, just to brighten up some of these spots that um, where the paint was a little thin. Some of these green, I don't, green tends to be one of the paint colors that can be kind of thin. Um, another one that always tends to be thin is purple. So I'm just filling these in, kind of just adding some bright spots. Um, I could go in and maybe even add a little bit of yellow to maybe brighten this up even more. So let's see how that looks. Let's see if we like the yellow. Remember, if I don't like the yellow, let it dry, come back to it later. Oh, I don't know. What are we thinking on the yellow? Let's see. I'll just keep going. I might add a little more green on it. We'll see. That's a, I think this is a little bit too yellow, so let me, let's just bring in a little bit more green there to dark, like tone it down. We don't want it that, that bright. I wanted it a little darker than that. A little bit here. And then I'm coming in with some of the darker green. Bring some of that up in here. Okay. Well, let me see. I gotta look at this from a different angle so I can see it. Oh, I think that looks okay. I'm gonna take a touch of white. Not too much, just a dab. Bring it into some of my dark green here, just to give a little bit of a highlight in here to get it to look. Um, I don't know if you've ever looked at the center of a clover, but they have, they have this little white area in there that kind of goes around. So let's add a little bit, a little bit there. I'm looking at this from a strange angle here, so the glare of the sun on the wet paint makes it a little tricky to see. So if you're stopping by, let me know how does it look. Is it looking good? Okay, and I think I'll do just a touch more of the white, just up and along this edge here. Kind of blending that in. Now, if you're doing this with the younger kid, kids of things like that, um, you know, they don't have to fuss with all this extra stuff. They can just paint it green, you know? They don't have to go in here and layer the colors and all that stuff. So the point is to get, get them painting, get them creating. 
We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for um, play, experimentation, having fun with painting. Okay, not totally sure on that because I can't see it very well. I'm kind of coming over to a different angle here. Let me just see how that That looks a little bit better. All right, so let's come over to this little shamrock. This one was really thin, so I'm gonna just kind of bring some paint in here. There we are. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of that yellow again, just to Brighten it up just a tad here. Gives it a little bit of warmth. A little golden touch. If you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad. And we are painting a Lucky Leprechaun. And this painting will be available. I'm going to put it on my YouTube page. It will also be available here on Facebook at the Painted Toad. And if you want the tracer and the color list, um, just put Lucky in the comments. Whether you're watching this right now or if you go by later and you're watching it later, put Lucky in the comments and I will get a notification and I will add um, a link for you to get the tracer. There we go. And the supply list. And this is a really fun one. You could do that, this painting, this weekend if you wanted to. I think um, if you celebrate St. Patrick's Day, I want to say, what is it, next Thursday or Wednesday? Let me look at my calendar. Ah, next Wednesday. So it's on Wednesday. Wednesday this year. And even if, if you don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day, there's still a fun little painting that you could do. So I'm actually um, a wee bit Irish. I am an eighth Irish on uh, my mother's side. My grandmother was uh, half English and half Irish. My grandfather was 100% Dutch. He came from, from Holland. Now we call it the Netherlands. But my grandmother was English and Irish. So I've got some, got some Irish running through me. And I'm just adding some highlights here, brightening up. There we go. Okay, while I'm working on my green here, I'm going to come back in, work a little bit more on my, my leprechaun's hat. I was kind of making him more of a bright green. He's got his lovely little gold band here. I'm going to keep the band clean, so I'm going to bring my brush right along the edge. If I accidentally get some on the band, I can always go back with my gold. And let's uh, get that in there. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take a little bit of the darker green and just kind of add in some shading here. Another option is I could go in here and add blue, give, make them a little bit give him a little hue of blue, but we're going to keep, I think I'm going to keep it like this. We don't want to go too crazy here. There we go. Kind of fill in his brim of his hat. And I'm going to take a little bit of the white and add a little bit of a highlight here on one side. I'm just kind of doing a curve. It's a roundish hat. There we go. And I'll add a little bit, uh, let's see, we'll add a little white over here too. Anytime you're painting, you want to be mindful of, you know, highlights and shadows, light spots and dark spots. Just makes your painting more interesting if you are thinking about those things. Okay. 
Now for his little vest, I'm going to come down there. I was thinking I was going to do a nice green on his pants here. And I was thinking of maybe doing something a little brighter for his vest. thinking of a waistcoat but I think I'm gonna make him wear a little vest so maybe he's wearing some I'm gonna do green on his arms here it's coming in here with my brush I could switch like if this is too difficult for you like I'm working in very small space here so if the brush is too big then switch it out and get a smaller brush you know I'm kind of used to working and moving my brush around so that it fits in you know where I want it to but if if you find that a little bit challenging then you know switch out get a smaller brush there's nothing that says you can't switch brushes all right well my blue is still wet I noticed I'm gonna touch this up just a tad there we go okay this is just me being a perfectionist right now so this is Ro from the Painted Toad and if you're joining me say hi let me know you're here. Let me know if you want this tracer and a link to the video. Put Lucky in the comments and I will send you the tracer and a copy of the video and a copy of the supply list, which I'm making up as I go. So that's why I don't have a, a supply list ready for you today because I didn't know what colors I was going to use. So I'm using some colors here. Now I'm going to brighten this up. I'm going to make this a little bit yellow and I'm putting the yellow right over the green and I know that the green is going to show through but that is okay I have a plan so this is going to be his little vest I wanted it to be a little bit brighter than the rest of his outfit I'm going to give him a snazzy little plaid uh, vest here so let's give him a snazzy plaid vest He's going to be, he's very well dressed. I mean, he does have a pot of gold, so he wears designer uh, leprechaun clothes. There we go. Okay, so let's have a little fun with this vest while it's still wet. I am going to switch brushes. I have a very small flat brush if I can find it. Every time I look for this brush, I can't find it. Hey, I found it. That's like record time. Never found it that quickly. Okay, so um, a little bit smaller here. And I'm just going to have some fun here. I'm going to make a plaid. So I'm going to dip it in my dark green. And my, um, my yellow is still wet, but that's okay. And I'm just going to kind of bring it across. Ooh, I probably should have gone on the edge. That's a little thick, but that's all right. It's fine. I'll leave it like that. I think it looks cute. So he's got some stripes. And then let's get some of that dark off of there. And now I'm going to go back with the lighter green. And we'll do a little plaid going this way. So this little guy is so fun. I almost think I might do a larger version of him without all the extra stuff. That might be fun. What do you think? Think we should do a larger version of this little guy? A full little leprechaun with a little plaid vest. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? It's so cute. Can you see that? Let me see here. Yeah, you can see that plaid. Super cute. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry because I don't want it to get all mixed up here. I want my stripes to look good. And I'm happy with my mushroom. I'm happy. I'm going to go in and add some grass at the very, very end. Um, I think I'm going to distinguish his face a little bit. So I'm going to, let me do, is my peach, my peachy, my fair peachy color. I've got a little bit left just to touch up a couple of those spots. Okay, I'm going to take a little white. And I'm going to go back into that pink that I had. Remember that magenta? And I'm going to just mix a little bit of white with magenta. I added a little bit of that coral. So you can kind of see here, it's like a, a light peachy pink. I don't know if you can tell the difference on there from the skin tone one I just did. Um, and I'm going to just give him 
How about we make his nose a little bit pinker than the rest of him. Maybe he got a little too much sun. I can totally relate with that. So let me get some of this in here. I'm gonna lighten it up. There we go. So I don't know if you can see the difference, but we will actually accentuate this with some lines and things like that. It's a little bit darker. That's all we need. Just a little bit. Um, I might take a little bit of white here, kind of bring a little curve while the paint's still wet. Give him a little shiny, shiny spot on his nose. There's just a little curve there on the edge. And uh, let's see, a little bit more dramatic here. Let's, I'll just touch it in a little bit there. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm happy with his little nose for the most part here. Let me get this little edge right here. Let me clean that up. This is me again being a perfectionist, so you don't have to be as fussy as I am when you paint. I just, that's just my natural tendency. All right, let me check here. I'm just gonna check. Oop, that's still a little bit wet. I'm gonna leave that, but our mushroom is dry. So I think what I will do with the mushroom, we're gonna go in here and add a little bit of white and a little bit more of the red because, number one, I want to um, kind of hide where those striations came up a little bit and I want to just add some more color in here. So let me just get in here with some red. I just rinsed my flat brush, my bigger flat brush. I'm going to just kind of go over this. Um, you know what? That might not, I might not be able to mask that. So I'm actually, when I do some spots on here, I will actually um, just do a spot right there and hide that little brown part that came over. Totally fixable. Um, so let's work a little bit on the underside of the mushroom. And I'm going to take some white and I'm just going to add some little white lines here. Get more of those, that striation. Get some variety. There we go. And I could add a little bit more white, I think, going down here. So I'm just gonna add it kinda on top of there. There we go. I've got a little bit of water dripping down. I'll just lighten that up just a tad. I can still see my brown lines in there. I could go back and add a little bit more brown if I want. Just to give it a lined look. Okay. And let's see here. I think what I want to do is I would like to brighten up and get some more white here. I want to brighten up this little area so um, where you can see on the, let me get this over so you can actually see it, you can kind of see where I have these little um, curves where that is. I'm going to try to get that effect a little bit here, but I'm going to do it the opposite way. So I'm going to just kind of bring in some white here and just kind of bring that in like that and I think that will actually give that little curve look that I was going for in the original drawing. There we 
There we go. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Um, how are we doing on time? Oh, it's been about an hour, so we're, we're getting there. Um, we just need to go back and add some details. I did want to add some spots by mushroom. So the mushroom is dry, and I'm going to do that with some white. So let me get some fresh white, because most of the white I've mixed here. Get some fresh white on my palette. Not very much. Just need a little bit. And I'm going to do a white spot over here. Now, if you trace this, I didn't actually bother tracing or drawing spots on there because I knew I was just going to paint them on anyways. But on the tracer, they do, there is some spots on there already kind of drawn in. So you can do that. Oop, this is still a little wet. I can see it turning pink on me. That's all right. I'm just going to map that in right there. Nice little round mushroom. And I'll come back over that in a little bit. We don't have to worry about that turning a little pink. It'll dry and we can go right over it again. And then over here, let's just kind of create a circle here. I don't know if you're watching how I'm doing that with my brush. I just kind of swoop one way, swoop the other. Uh, another great way to do circles that might be easier for you is to use a round brush. I just, I like the like I said, I am partial to the flat brush. So I'm just adding some fun little spots here to my mushroom. I think we'd have one right over here. I should look at the original to see where I put them. Oh, they're just kind of randomly everywhere. So if you do it with the template, it'll be a little bit different than mine, but that's all right. Different is good. Always, always, when you are painting, don't feel like you have to follow everything exactly. If you have a great idea and you want to change it up, go for it. Experiment. Try things. It could turn out terrible or it could turn out wonderful. We have to get past that fear. So don't let fear of making mistakes stop you. Especially with acrylic because with acrylic, you can always just paint over it again, so it's not like permanent forever. You can always paint on it again. You can see I'm getting very quiet here because I'm focusing on my mushroom spots. I'm thinking maybe there'd be one up here. But we're not going to see it all, so I'm just going to do a little edge up there. Doot, doot, doot. Ooh, there was a lot of thick paint on that edge from earlier. There we go. What do you think? Oh, I love the spots. All right, I'm loving it. I think I think it looks super duper cute. I hope you think so too. All right, I'm going to let those dry. I will come back and I'll probably do one more little layer of white on there, especially this one that turned pink. Though the pink actually looks okay. It doesn't look terrible. Um, our little leprechaun, he needs his, his four, lucky four-leaf clover up there in his the brim of his hat. So I'm just going to take, now I've already got some green here, some really dark green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brighter green with a little bit of white. Okay, because I want this little um, four-leaf clover to actually show up. And we can outline it a little bit too. But doing the, the lighter, I'm just kind of dabbing little circles on there. Doing the lighter on the darker means that it will show up just fine. There we go. See? You can see it really good. Oh, there's like a lumpy piece of paint in there. Hold on. Let me see if I can get that lump out there. Oh, it was like a little chunk of paint. Okay. And then very gently, I might just touch gently. There. Good enough. All right, so there's his little four-leaf clover. We're good with that. I could add a little dark in it just to give us some dimension. I'll do the center a little bit dark. We don't want the edges to be dark because then they'll blend in with his hat. 
So we'll just do a little bit of a dark center there. Almost looks like a little green flower because the edges I didn't quite get. Let me see if I can be perfectionist again and get that. When you paint, you do not have to be as fussy as this. I just want it to look that stem to look a little bit skinnier. I don't really want it to look like a flower, so I'm just going to darken this in with my very thin flat brush. Let's bring that in and we'll bring that there. There. That's a little better. Okay. All right. Now, um, while this little guy is, well, while my mushroom is drying, I still got to do a little bit more white on that, but I'm going to do some outlining here. So this is the tricky part. Um, if you are not comfortable outlining, one of the things I recommend is to use, um, you could use like a black Sharpie to outline, or you could use a paint pen. So if you aren't comfortable outlining, and something as small as this, like this is pretty small, um, so it, it might be a little bit more challenging. If you do outline, you do want to make sure that you, um, what am I trying to say here? You want to make sure the paint is dry. So don't go on this on, with a Sharpie if your paint is still wet. We don't want that. I'm going to, I'm just going over his beard a little bit more so it can kind of overlap on top of his plaid vest. So we have a nice little bearded transition there. A little bit more beard for you, buddy. There we go. And I even kept the paint kind of thick, so his beard is actually, has an actual texture. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, just to save us a little time, these are almost dry. Oh, I almost forgot. His gold buttons. Remember? I was going to put gold buttons on there. So let's add some gold buttons. So we're going to do one here, and one there. Look at that. So cute. Little gold buttons. If you are just joining me, this is Rose from the Paint Toad. We are painting a lucky leprechaun today, and we are almost done. We just have to do some detail and outlining. I'm going to take a little bit of my dark green, kind of add a little here under his vest. Just kind of bring him down some color there. It's the little things like that that'll really add um, some interesting details and things to your, to your painting. Um, I think I'm going to do, I did want to do a little bit of a stripe for his stockings. So I'm going to get some, uh, I'm just taking some light green here with some white. And I just need a little light green. I'm going to go on an angle there so you can see me. Taking the side of my small skinny flat brush and doing some stripes. So that's super cute. Okay, we're going to do these mushrooms, um, white circles on the mushrooms one more time, and then I'll outline, and then we'll be done. So let's swoop this around here. I kind of want this bright, stark white to be very stand out ish um, I could go in and you know add a little beige or something like that if I wanted but I kind of like the white against the red orange mushroom here gives it a little bit of a cartoony look but it's super cute 
He is kind of a cartoony little leprechaun. There we go. Okay. All right, the last little bit. Oh, I almost forgot. See, I keep forgetting things. This is one of those works in progress. Okay, I'm gonna take my, um, I'm taking a round brush this time. Oh, maybe I want my flat brush. I don't know. No, I'm gonna do my flat brush. Sorry, if you wanted to learn how to use round brush today, today was not the day to learn. <laughs> I'm not doing much with the round brush. Um, but let me do, I'm going to take, I've got my greens and I'm going to take and dip my flat brush or you know what, I could also do an angled brush on this. I almost wonder if my angled brush would do a better job. So here's a difference. Flat brush, straight on top, angled brush, angled. I think I'm going to try my angled brush. Um, let me just do a little test here. I'm testing on my okay so with the angle brush I'm dipping it in green my two my light green and my dark green and I'm just going to kind of bring up some little um, and make sure there's enough paint on your brush if there's not enough paint then these aren't going to come on here nice I could also do this with a fan brush but fan brushes are tricky I'm not totally comfortable yet with a fan brush, I'm gonna be honest with you. So I'm just gonna bring this in. I need more of my cadmium green though. My dark green, I want some brighter green in there too. So I'm mixing the bright and the dark. My cadmium and the dark green. And I'm just making sure it's super wet here. I make that noise a lot whenever I'm making things like grass or little quick brush strokes here. We'll bring some grass here between his feet. He's standing in the grass. I'll bring some right in front of our mushroom. I'm gonna make that a little bit darker because the mushroom's wanting to show through a little. And I don't feel like going over the grass again later. So bring that up there. Okay. And I'm not going to bring any in front of this shamrock. The shamrock is actually going to be in front of the grass. Let's brighten this up just a little bit. I'm taking some of the green, bringing it in there. Light green. So we get a little variation here. Hopefully you can see that okay. Hopefully my hand's not too much in the way, but I'm just taking this and sweeping it up. And then if I want, I could take a little yellow in there, or I could take a little white. I think maybe I'll just do a touch of white, just to brighten it up just a little bit. Not too much. There. Okay, so that's filled in. Um, let me check and see. I know my beard is probably still wet, but this is... So I'm going to show you that little trick I was telling you. Um, today I'm just going to use a Sharpie. You could also use a paint pen. And let me check you. got to make sure your paint is dry. Our little guy had a smirk right here. So I'm going to give him his little smirk. And then maybe give him a little outlining around the nose. Like that. Um, I could, let me check down here, is this all dry? It's pretty dry. If it's not dry, you'll be able to tell right away because your Sharpie won't come in there very nice. Um, if you're doing like a really nice permanent piece that you're going to like hang on your wall or something, I would definitely recommend paint pen for outline instead of Sharpie. The Sharpie can fade. 
But for something fun like this, where you're just doing a little, a fun little sketch, fun little design here, here we'll put some little buckles on his shoes. Um, then Sharpie is totally fine. Let's get a little bit of outline in here. Oop, that's so low, but I'm going to stay away from that. Just add a little bit of outline. I could add a little in here in the gold. Some lines. And notice I'm not like doing a big heavy outline all around everything. You don't need a big heavy outline. You just need a little suggestion of an outline. Hear my husband lurking. He's probably wanting dinner. I hear you lurking out there. I'm almost done. Just using some black here. I'm going to come in and add maybe just a couple lines coming up. We could add a little bit of an edge down here along our mushroom bottom. Maybe a little touch up along here. Another bit of an edge here. Be careful around that white because I think that's still wet. Another fun thing you can do to give a little bit of motion just do some little lines like this. You know, could do that. There we go. We'll get a little bit around our shamrock here. If you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad. We are outlining our lucky leprechaun. Sorry, my hand's in the way here. I'm just using a Sharpie to just accentuate some of the lines. And uh, we're almost done. So we almost have our lucky leprechaun all finished. Super cute. I'm really loving him. He's a cute little guy. A little bit here on his beard. Okay, I think I'm a thinking he's just about done. Just gonna add a little line here on my mushrooms. The paint's thick over there. I'm gonna avoid that side. I don't want to get paint. See, that's a little blob there. We don't want to get paint on my sharpie. Just kind of having some fun here. Just add in some black lines. I just want to give it a little bit of motion, a little bit of texture. I'll add some black in there. I could go on and on and on and on, but we don't want to go on forever because, frankly, I need to go out and make dinner. So, I think. I think my little leprechaun is finished. So let me sign here. Let's see, is this dry? Yeah. I'm just going to put down here. You know, I might just add kind of fun on the side here. How about right here? So good. Sometimes I like to hide my signature just for fun. We're going to put it right over here. There. That's on the edge. Super sweet. Just gonna add a little bit here. Okay. I 
think he's done. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. And don't forget to like and subscribe to The Painted Toad. Find us on Facebook at The Painted Toad or at our website, www.paintedtoad.com. Make sure you remember to be creative, be artistic, and get connected at The Painted Toad.